Now that you've selected your data collection method, what are the steps in the process? Well, there are only four steps to collect data using Pando. That sounds pretty simple, right? Let's take a closer look at each step. The first thing you need to do is draft your invitation email. The purpose of this email is to invite organizations within your system to participate in your relationship survey. Not sure what to include in your invitation email? Well, your invitation should include several important pieces of information. What is the purpose of this system mapping effort? What is the benefit of participating? How do participants take the survey? And who can participants go to with the questions and concerns? That may sound like a lot of information, but don't worry, Pando provides a template email that you can customize. Second, test your survey by sending a test invitation email to some of your colleagues. Ask them to carefully read through the invitation email. You will want to ask them, does the email effectively motivate them to go to Pando and share information about their relationship? Are the instructions clear? Next, ask them to take the survey. Do they understand the process they need to follow to share the details of the relationships? Do they understand that they can come back any time to add or update the status of their relationships? Make sure to address the issues testers raised before launching your survey. Because, let's be honest, if your colleagues were confused, then the actors in the system will be too. Now, your email invitation is ready to send. What comes next? Well, the third step is to work with your colleagues to brainstorm a small list of initial survey participants. This should be about 20 to 25 actors that are recognized as key. Make sure to engage a diverse range of stakeholders that represent different perspectives and aspects of the work being done. For example, this group should include government, civil society, businesses, and minority groups. As you generate this list, ask yourself, what actors offer information, ideas, and support about the system? As you know, your system map is only as good as the data collected. That's why you will need the help of this initial group of actors to launch, promote, and grow the map. So it's important to secure buy-in from this initial group early in the process. But how? Well, you can talk to the group about the objective of system mapping and encourage them to explore the emerging map. Now you're ready to send an email invitation to the initial group of 20 to 25. They will receive an email inviting them to complete the survey and join the map. Users will input the names of actors they go to for information, ideas, or support here. And this is where they will describe how they collaborate. Next, users will be asked about the frequency of interaction with the actors they listed. See here, this frequency question helps you understand the strength of the relationship. Remember? Participants can put if they interact often, sometimes, or rarely. Users can also indicate that they are no longer connecting with an actor by selecting no longer active. Lastly, a user can input an email contact for the actor they've listed. If the actor is an organization, not an individual, the user is encouraged to put an email of a key contact that they can go for support in that institution. By adding emails, Panda will automatically invite a user contact to also complete the survey and map their relationship. Once participants submit actors, they will be redirected to the existing system map and can explore the relationships they just map. Let's look at an example together. As you can see by these out degree links, Youth Enterprise Development Fund listed Department of Youth Affairs, Equity Bank, and a mean youth group as organizations they go to. That's why arrows are pointing out from Youth Enterprise Fund. I will use the information participants provide about frequency to determine the strength of the relationship.
You can see that Youth Enterprise Development Fund interacts with Equity Bank most frequently and with Department of Youth Affairs and Amin Youth Group least frequently. Makes sense, right? So, how does your map continue to grow? I mean, you don't just stop with those initial 20 to 25 actors, right? Well, remember I said that those initial participants give names and contact information of other actors and that Pando then invites those actors to complete the survey. This is called a snowball effect. You list five actors to invite, those five each invite five more and those 25 each invite five more. The map begins to grow exponentially and to reflect the real life system. Pretty cool, isn't it? You might be wondering, is it really that easy? Well, you can only get robust system data when the actors that you invite actually complete the survey. Honestly, this often requires a human touch. So as the map administrator, you will need to play an active role in encouraging the first set of participants, those 20 to 25, to reach out to the others. Not only do they need to invite other actors to join, but they should be prepared to send follow-up emails and make phone calls to urge their participation.